Okay, we're back. We're live. Last show of the day, four to five block, uh, with Emmett White, the CEO of Arcadia. There should be some applause now. Okay, there it is. I knew it was here somewhere. <laughs> this is our inaugural of Aging with Grace, and we're going to do this on Tuesdays at, at four o'clock. And uh, we're going to call this show uh, Arcadia to the Rescue because Emmett is the CEO of Arcadia for 20 years now, which is a long time. So, Emmett, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Jay. Pleasure to be here. Great to have you. This is really important. You know, we cover so many community, community events and stories and sort of the corners of the community people don't necessarily know about or they have heard, but they don't really understand. Right. And so to, to know about Arcadia, you know, for years and years, drive on the freeway. There it was. It was right <laughs> up there. <laughs> but it's much more than that, you it know. Is. Yeah. So first thing is, what is Arcadia? Well, Arcadia is a continuing care retirement community. And uh, although we're not supposed to use those kind of words, what it essentially boils down to is a place where seniors can determine to live the rest of their life and have a continuum of care from independent living, assistance if needed, nursing care if needed, and end of life care. Well, you know, you have to have all those things. Because mm -hmm. if you're missing some of that, you might have an unpleasant surprise in the end of mm -hmm. your life. <laughs> well, a, a big problem at times is, and we were talking about it pre-show, is the great fear that a senior, each on their own, will experience when that episodic event occurs and they just don't know what to do and they are, they're at a loss. Where do I go? What do I do? What help do I need? Why is that? I mean, it's an interesting, I think part of it is that and at some level, we all believe we are immortal. True. And that our bodies will not fall apart. Uh, you know, the equipment around the computers, the cameras, the lights, those things fall apart, but not our bodies. Because mm -hmm. if we have the right state of mind, our body will last forever. I think some, a lot of people feel that way, no? I think, I think you're right to, to the extent that your mind is willing, and then all of a sudden, year by year, after you hit 50 and then 60 and then 70, that your body begins to, to disagree with your mind. Uh, but the mind will over, overcome that. Uh, what we find uh, as, a, as a remedy or uh, you know, a, a positive aspect is if you learn about it, if we can educate folks, if the folks can understand what the process of aging in grace, aging is, then when the problems arise or when aging takes its toll, there'll be a better acceptance and a better ability to meet that, the needs that arise and to live in uh, quality and, and grace. Yeah, and you know what? I think, I mean, there's, there's, I think there's three points on the scale here. Mm -hmm. One is you do a good job at that uh, and you associate with the right organizations and you make plans and, mm -hmm. you know, you're very pers perspicacious about it. Mm -hmm. And the other extreme is <clears throat> denial. <clears throat> well, you don't do anything, and, and it hits you like a, like a ton of bricks because mm -hmm. you, haven't, you haven't really thought about it. Mm -hmm. You thought you were immortal. And the other way, the third way, would be right in the middle somewhere, where you think about it, but maybe not enough, uh, but you have ideas that you can execute. You, at least you know your options at, in, in a bad time. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which way most people feel, but I, but I think in Hawaii we have a kind of Mm, issue about this. We have a kind of conflict because culturally, historically, this is a very family-oriented state and families took care of the kupuna. Mm -hmm. And that we talked all earlier also, um, that has kind of ended. You know? Well, it's just, it's impossible to, to, you sandwich a generation, whether it's the boomers, it's the Xers, when you sandwich them between the millennials, uh, the silence, and some of the uh, last of the greatest generation, uh, it becomes impossible. The cost of living's too high, the, the kids need the attention, you've got to attend to your work, and providing that uh, hub for uh, intergenerational uh, life becomes much more difficult, especially with us living longer, having the medical means to do that, but the body, uh, while it lives longer, uh, does age uh, with a lot more difficulty. And just to give you an example, at Arcadia, for example, and we're talking about it today, the uh, person that will develop Alzheimer's or dementia, and it's not 
just that Arcadia, this is universal yeah. for, for more and more aging. All the time. And you know, the statistics, uh, you hit the age of 85, one in two has a, has a chance of Alzheimer's. But it doesn't onset immediately, it, 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 it insidiously creeps on you. And what we find in our long-term care, our nursing care, is that about 90% of the residents that do end up in nursing care, 24-hour nursing care, uh, are with Alzheimer's and dementia. It's a nightmare, but mm -hmm. it is a predictable nightmare. Mm -hmm. so it is. It's, you know, and I think one thing, <clears throat> I'd like to explore this with you. Sure. One thing is that <clears throat> you, you need to stay active in your, in your elder years. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you put your feet up on the, on the, on the, on the, on the couch and live on bonbons, <clears throat> you're really mm -hmm. asking for trouble. And I remember years ago, uh, I, I don't know, I won't mention names, but I knew a court clerk. Mm -hmm. And she was a court clerk who, you know, in those days you would retire, they would call you back, you'd go back, mm -hmm. you'd retire a second time and a third time. Right. And one day she finally retired. And I told her, I said, look, when you retire, don't just sit with the bonbons mm -hmm. because that will get you soon. And sure enough, in six months she was gone because she was sitting with the bonbons. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got to stay active. Don't you agree? I agree 100%. Now, when our loves move into Arcadia or 15 Craig's side, or the new uh, venture we've been on uh, starting this year, uh, what we call Arcadia at Home, a CCRC, a Continuing Care Retirement Community without walls, and what that does is allow you to live at home, but the benefits and the programs and the socialization uh, has an opportunity to work with you while you stay at home since at least half the uh, senior adults in the world will say I want to stay at home. I want to explore that. I think mm -hmm. that you know as uh, you mentioned it before and mm -hmm. I'd heard of many of your projects. Uh, what, I want, what I want to tell you Jay is that at Arcadia one of the things that tickles me greatly is when folks move in and and you ask for volunteers they, they politely tell you to go you know go scratch and they said, I'm retired. I didn't, I didn't, co I didn't move into Arcadia to volunteer. But where you, where, you, where, you, where you beat the clock on the whole thing is that we have such a variety of activities and things to do and things to try that it's not a matter of volunteering. It's a matter of getting your feet wet. And the way I look at it, come on down, play around with us, do what you want and you can retreat to your sanctuary when you want to eat the bonbons. Yeah. But we find that most of our residents, our 300 plus residents, will at one time or another love that and love the social activity. Uh, for example, at the lunch hour, at the breakfast hour, and at the dinner hour, don't be on the other side of the door when they open it. <laughs> that's, that's the way to beat the idea, but you're absolutely right. Engaging folks uh, whether they're 95, 65, or millennial, or Xer, or, or boomer, is critically important. Yeah. Before we go too much further, I mm -hmm. want to ask you how you got involved in this 20 years now, <laughs> and going strong, you're still as, as vital and committed and uh, passionate about it as you were 20 years ago. And I, I always thought it was a great career move that you made yeah. from being a practicing lawyer, even a litigator, to all of a sudden helping people, you know, large numbers right. of people and making their lives worthwhile and longer. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, I must tell you, as I told you pre-show, that uh, I listen or hear you once in a while. And you called yesterday and said, let's talk about aging and grace. And on the radio with any of one of our grandchildren, and we've got seven under seven, oh, I'll great. say, I know that fellow. And they'll say, yeah, Grandpa, who's that? I said, that's Mr. Fidel. I know him. And so when did you know him? I knew him when I was a young lawyer. And we worked together. I was very fortunate in the practice, had wonderful partners, uh, and um, was very lucky. I had served on boards, of course, in, in, uh, in the, uh, while I was practicing. And... Uh, Fortunately, married for 45 years to a woman that's uh, literally made me a better man over the years. And likewise committed to the community. <laughs> and committed to the community. Yeah. Betty is the head of school at Sacred Hearts. And I remember Arcadia was probably in a bit of trouble. I had served on the board. I'd gotten off the board because the, the law, the mistress it is, was demanding quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, I got a call from one of the people that I knew on the board and said, look, would you come back? And I said, uh, uh, for worker bee stuff, I'll, I'll come back and help because I, I love the place. 
And uh, so I, I said, I, okay. Well, came back in about the first six months, uh, one of the board meetings, uh, the form, one of the former executive directors was not well. And they said, look, Emmett, you have clients here. They know you. But why don't you come on down a couple hours a day? Just keep an eye on things. And I said, you guys are out of your gourd. Not going to happen. <laughs> Law firm was not happy no with way. me. Uh, sure. And uh, so I remember uh, I had to go on a deposition trip. And I thought about, could I, could I make a difference at Arcadia? Now, the firm was not happy when I, but actually, a couple of my f former folks that had been with me for years at the firm, they, when they got older, they have come over no to work kidding. at Arcadia. No kidding. That's great. See, it all comes home. Oh, it does. <laughs> well, at any rate, I gave Betty a call. Let her. This was the day before phones and uh, or cell phones. Yeah. And uh, when you went into your hotel room, when that red light was flashing, it wasn't to ask if you had a good trip. <laughs> that was a what big deal. was problem at home? <laughs> well, I gave Betty a call and I said, you know, uh, what do you think if I went over and worked at Arcadia? And she thought about it and, and she said, well, uh, essentially, uh, if that's what your heart says, yes. Uh, you got three kids uh, going to college. Uh, one, they were going to college soon. Yeah, they were in college. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have mortgage. Uh, but I said, well, they're, it's not quite the law firm, but everything's going to be all right. And I went over, and uh, the rest is history. What a blessing it's been, and, uh, and I've had a lot of fun doing it. Both of us are, are near 70 now, and uh, Betty and I, and uh, we love what we do, and as long as the d boards will have us and the, and the workforce looks at us and says, yeah, they're getting old, but we still will listen to them. <laughs> That's the test. But the, <laughs> but the real job is, and for me, in the next five years, if I st stay erect and of sound mind, is to develop the leadership within the millennials, the Xers, and the younger boomers. Yeah. And that's what we're working on. Yeah. Well, you know, it's more than Arcadia because mm -hmm. as the CEO of Arcadia, you are leading, you know, the community that deals with the issue of the Kupuna. Mm -hmm. And it's a big issue. And when we get back from this break, I'd like to talk about the macroeconomics, the macro, you know, mm -hmm. social implications sure. of Hawaii and where Hawaii has been and where it's going mm -hmm. in terms of dealing with taking care of, of its seniors. Good we'll idea. be right back after this short break. This is Emmett White, CEO of Arcadia. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen. I host Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. And I do this because I care about science literacy in Hawaii. I want to spread the understanding that science is a vital and interesting part of everyone's life. I want to make sure the broadest possible spectrum of people understand the beauty and the value of science and realize that science plays out each and every day of their lives. I want you to understand that science is fun. So we bring on to this show each week guests who are scientists, from astronomers to zoologists, and we talk about what they do and how they do it. But most importantly, we talk about why you should care about their work, why you should see that their work has value and impact on your life. So I hope you'll join us Fridays, 1 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii. You can watch us via live stream. You can watch us uh, recorded on Olelo. And you can see us uh, each week. We hope you'll join us. Okay, we're back. I told you we'd come back. We came back. That's Emmett White, the CEO of Arcadia. We're talking about aging with grace today at 4 o'clock on Tuesday, our inaugural show on the subject. And uh, the title of our episode is uh, Arcadia to the Rescue. Arcadia is, is an iconic term. Uh, everybody knows what it is, and everybody has a kind of high regard for it, which is a wonderful thing. Because, you know, it's, it's more than just one retirement institution, one senior housing project, one, what do you call it, care, yep. care facility. Yep. Um, it is a laboratory, and I know you take it that way. Mm -hmm. And so the, the question is, before we get to exactly what you do in the laboratory, what is the situation here in Hawaii? I mean, we know that the old way of dealing with our seniors is gone. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that we, you know, we have multiple jobs. We have um, 
not enough money to pay right. uh, the cost of occupancy around around the state. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are in the poverty zone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not a great economy right now, and it's probably not going to be in the years to come. Mm -hmm. What is the situation with the bell curve? Yeah. Well, int it's interesting. Uh, I should start with a. We keep humble. You always keep humble. And Arcadia, with its good name, I love. But the derivation, Arcadia was one of the city-states in an area in old Greece. And it was rural. And Arcadia n derives its name from the uh, a state that, that Arcadia was built on. And uh, Freer, the Freer uh, family. And the uh, Athenians referred to the Arcadians when they came into Athens as the country bumpkins. They were the rural folk. What was the, but what was the, was a positive thing about Arcadia? Arca because yeah. it was copied, it was copied in Canada. Yeah. And, and the French Canadians built Arcadia and it was called Arcadia yeah. by that term. And, that's, and then they that's took it. that to right. Louisiana mm -hmm. where we still have Cajuns right. who are out of the uh, Arcadia in Louisiana. And it's the, it's the idea of the rural simplicity uh, but the goodness that, that comes with it. So I always keep that humble thought if, you, if your head starts to get too big. But you ask a good question. Uh, I, as I understand it, although metrics, uh, you can play with them any way you want, I think, and I'm told, that by 2020, thereafter, shortly thereafter, about a quarter of the population is going to be 65 and older, or coming into that. And if that's the case, we have really got to do some planning. I talked to my... Uh, we meaning the everybody. Everybody. I've talked to my... I talked to s uh, residents at Arcadia yesterday indicating that the idea of getting older and working longer is actually beginning to take place. And what can we do in order to satisfy that need but also to encourage uh, our younger generations to, to do the kind of work we're doing and to work with what amounts to a quarter of the population at a fair price. It doesn't come for free. And what, I, what we try to do con constantly is educate our folks on the fact that planning, planning from the time you, you start your first job. Now, I fully remember, put money away, you've got to save it in our, in our old, in our old uh, yeah, long yeah. time ago and law firm. It's more important now than it was then, actually. But, <laughs> but we began to put money away. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have a whole heck of a lot to put away, but we put it away. Yeah. And then, of course, at Arcadia, we encourage our folks as they begin their employ, after a year, we will put in, the company will put it in 8.5% in their 403B, which is akin to a 401K, if they put in 4%. So. There's, there's These are people who are resident in no, Arcadia. No, the, the uh, employees. Employees, sorry. The planning to start that. Now, for the for the silence that we have, we have some uh, greatest generation left, but the silence are beginning to really uh, fold. The 1925 to 1945, 44-45 group. Uh, we expect boomers. Some we get, but we expect in another decade that they will begin to fully uh, populate uh, that that. But in the meantime, we can't build more Arcadia, as are Craig says, at least, and I say that from my own personal point of view. First, the dirt's too expensive. Second, it's expensive. And we, we realize that a portion of the population can afford it, but the real, what about that middle group that's too rich to be poor and too poor to be rich? Oh, gee, which And I mean, you're naming 70% yeah. of the world. Yeah. Yeah. And, what we do is say, what can we do so that you begin to plan for the future so that when something hits, you may be lucky as can be, keep your house, the kids get it, and everything's fine. You also may end up in a position where you've got to invade that which you saved, whether it's half of 500,000, it's, it's a house that's got 700,000 equity. There comes a time. But there comes a time that it may. What is the plan that you can execute that will continue to provide a quality existence for yourself so that you will not be a burden to others. Who do I talk to to man? Because this is not something you read in the newspaper. No, it's not. We try to go out and talk. We, we give uh, uh, lectures. But the bottom line is if somebody has a question, and, and of course I have a small circle of old friends, I get calls out of the blue. 
and I'm telling anybody on your listening audience, you may call and I will, I, every day, get to all the calls by the end of the day. And it may be good or bad or indifferent, but if you've got a question, we will set you up with someone that'll spend some time and so that you can then spread the word yourself. Right. And that's, to, to that's how we discuss do it. this very topic. Oh, everything. I should mention that the Arcadia companies, and you give me the opportunity to do it, over the last 20 years, we've been extremely fortunate. We, we began with Arcadia, and the board said, essentially, with um, expert advice from, from the outside, you've got enough strength and you've got a, enough learning, you can go outside the walls. And so, first thing we did was establish a foundation. Uh, an old client of mine, a curmudgeon by definition, but a, a dear person and, and his wife had no children but uh, had a lot of money and they gave a million too uh, because I represented him in years and we went to the same college. He played well, ball there. Nice. And, he gave, nice. and that started the foundation. Well, after we established the foundation, money began to come into that. We have yeah. about 16 million in it now that's and, great and promises or, or monies that we know will take it up to about 25. Well, it's a natural object of bounty for people who like the organization. Our social accountability, our nonprofit status <laughs> mandates more than effort that we look at the value of of what our tax savings are which is in the millions of dollars but also what have you done lately to help those in all in all situations. 15 Craigside would not be up if it were not for the foundation. The foundation put about five and a half million into it before it broke ground, and it was at the worst time in the nation's history, 2008, 2009. Uh, but we got it up. Uh, our bonds I remember are how period. hard you worked on that. Emmett. Right, at the neighborhood board. I was, I, I was on years. the neighborhood board, and uh, <laughs> we met every month, and Emmett was there every month. Mm -hmm. uh, telling us about every single step of the process. It and, was uh, impressive. And the neighbors have been wonderful. I mean, it, it, and at first, it was, we were blocking views, uh, but uh, we, we cut that out, and we've had a very wonderful relationship. So we were able what to... What is 16 Craigside? 15 me. Craigside? Yeah, F 15 Craigside. 15 Craigside. Yeah, what is it? It's a, it's a continuing care retirement community, about two-thirds the size of Arcadia, has 170 units, uh, right presently, we're about 230 uh, residents. We're full, and Arcadia has about 300, 320 residents. And it's a, it, it's just a wonderful, wonderful community that over the last, it will be five years old in March, has developed just a wonderful feeling. The relationships between the two communities are wonderful, but also what we were able to do during that time uh, in the early 2000s was then establish another company that did consulting services, worked with communities and, and uh, facilities that wanted some advice. And we were also able to establish management relationships with Central Union Adult Day Care. Many of you have heard of that. And Kilahana Methodist Church uh, out in uh, uh, New, or, uh, yeah, New Valley. Mm -hmm. And those, uh, we serve about 100, 150 adults uh, that way. During the same time, we were able to establish Arcadia Home Health Services, and we've been able to get into the homes of folks and help them uh, when they need some assistance. And and let's then, dwell on that for a minute. Sure. That really, by the way, Arcadia originally, uh, well, maybe still today, it's a nonprofit, but it's also got religious connections. It, it has, its roots lay in the United Church of Christ and with Central Union Church. Mm -hmm. But we, we welcome all uh, we, we believe, uh, the board believes, that it's important to keep your roots uh, polished, but that, uh, and I'll share an article with you later on it, we welcome all, and in fact, all of our seven corporations uh, that we have uh, are nonprofits, 501c3s, mm -hmm. and the synergy between them is absolutely critical to the success of serving those whom we love and serve right now, then it will be up to about a thousand folks, say, on a daily basis. With all the corporations. With all the corporations. But that it's, it's, a, it's a venue and a pathway uh, road leading to uh, knowledge of uh, your senior years and aging in grace. Sure. Because there is, you know, we had uh, 
We had a, a show with the Salvation Army mm -hmm. the other day, mm -hmm. and I was so impressed with how they operate and uh, you know how they how they help people. And it's mm -hmm. religious, but it's only a, sort of optional. You know, yeah. it's, it's, they don't foist anything on anybody. But uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to get back to uh, this this really wonderful new idea. I don't know how new it is, but it strikes me. You know, years ago at the HTDC, the High Tech Development Corporation, mm -hmm. <clears throat> they came up with the idea that not all entrepreneurs had to be physically in the Manoa Innovation Center. Right. You could be somewhere else. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, you could operate as if you were in MIC, mm -hmm. as long as you had some advice and consultation and help. Mm -hmm. And so they established the, a program that, um, you know, deals with entrepreneurs who work in their garages, if you will. Right. And it sounds like you've taken the same kind of track here. People, lots of people, in fact, you went on the street right now and said, would you like to age at home? They would say, yes, I prefer to age at home. I would. But they need help. You can't mm -hmm. do that so how easily. How do you do it? And this is intended to help them, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let me tell you how we've, how we've done that. It's, it's not overnight, but we've seen the same thing, that, Jay, that you're describing. And that is the technology offers a, a super deluxe means by which we can monitor, we can talk, uh, we can help with medications, uh, we can be at the beck and call, and we have initiated that, one in our, our home health services, but also with our Arcadia at home, the CCRC Without Walls, it offers, for example, somebody wants to do a workout there's, we'll have them tune in to bounce with Betty uh, down in our uh, health care center. And, and, and they, if they want to do that, if they want to come in and swim in the pool, they can do that. If they want to come for dinner and, and socialize a bit, fine. But they, instead of retreating to their apartment, they retreat back to their house. Now, of course, uh, as age takes its toll, the driving slows up or gets out of favor. Uh, the, the big event of the week is the doctor's appointment. Yeah. Uh, all of that, we begin to sympathize, empathize with that and set schedules and set up relationships that will not disappoint and encourage folks to continue to live a good, positive life. They're a member of the family. You, you make them a member of the, it's kind of a feeder huge. organization. It's huge. Because that, you know, at, at a time when they need to say, come in, yep. they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, absolutely. I, I, this is a little off topic, and I don't know when the next break is, but <laughs> I, I, I wanted just to mention to you one of the studies that always impressed me from the early 2000s done by the University of Hawaii on um, housing and uh, housing for those the, uh, that uh, controlled housing, uh, subsidized housing. And what, what's very important about that, and what I took from the study and really tried to apply it in our thinking, was that those folks that, that got into a, a residence and, and paid a, you know, a less fee or a, you know, a, a, a statutory fee, uh, one of the things that the administrators or the managers would always complain about is as they got older, it just went to hell in a handbag because they were afraid to help and yet the person was losing. And I, my old joke was, yeah, hanging your depends out on the lanai to dry so you could use them the next day. I mean, <laughs> that kind of stuff is, taking up groceries or helping them with their meds or or the falling or or, sure. or, or the forgetting yeah. and they listed the you know the, the things that were were needed and what I what I encourage and, and I hope is that people they'll say oh Arcadia it's too expensive or or Craigside too expensive or Kahala Nui is too expensive or the plaza is too expensive yeah, fine it's too expensive but the basic precepts the basic way that we can get to people, that people can help themselves, that people can get help. Follow the model. Follow, listen to what we're saying. It may not be perfect, and, and there's still going to be problems, but those that have it a little better off than others, I've seen it at Arcadia, they're willing, through that exemption and other things, to reach out through us, through the management, yeah. to, to help everyone, to give everyone an opportunity like I that's said, great. Grace. That's so kind. But actually. you got well. It's kind, but and, and you got to be. I mean, I you got to keep my language clean, and I always have to, you know, be upright about it. But you know, <laughs> you got to be tough on it, and you got to work on it because the burden is equal. Yeah. Whoever gets has got to work as hard on getting as the person that is working to give. Yeah. What a great idea. 
I must say. Let's take a break. Uh, we'll come back, and, and then I want to talk about, um, you know, uh, the implications of this in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what you see uh, happening in the years going forward with these changes in the, in the age bell curve, mm -hmm. uh, and where Arcadia can fit in its own right, but also as a laboratory, um, you mm -hmm. know, for other institutions Quite. here and maybe even on the mainland. Quite. That's Emmett White, the CEO of Arcadia, a really important institution in our community here on Aging with Grace. And we're talking about Arcadia to the rescue. Aloha, my name is Justine Espiritu and I co-host Hawaii Farmers Series with Matthew Johnson of Oahu Fresh. We talk about Hawaii's local farmers and their supporters. In order to have a vibrant and sustainable local food system, uh, farmers are always the foundation, but there's so many other people uh, involved in the community that help support those farmers. So we bring those folks onto our show every Thursday at 4 p.m. We get their backstory, their history, find out a little more about them, and we find out why they love what they do and their perspective and their advice on how we can continue to have a dynamic and vibrant and sustainable local food system. So we, again, we broadcast live every Thursday at 4 p.m. And you can also catch us on ThinkTech's YouTube channel as well as Alelo54. So we hope you tune in and join us. Thank you. So they've been with me for eight years. Okay, we're back. We're here with Emmett White, CEO of Arcadia. Emmett, you want to give some shout outs to anybody who might be watching from Arcadia today? Keep up the good work. <laughs> okay. Sour reviews are underway. <laughs> We're on the way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have we have a situation in Hawaii where you know a lot of people can't make enough money to pay for right. occupancy. I mean, even look at the homeless. Yes. What are they going to do when they hit retirement right. age? Right. Uh, you know, and, the, and government programs can't possibly keep no, up with this. They cannot. Uh, we can't even fix the potholes on the streets mm -hmm. or or handle the homeless. So we're going to have a debacle. I mean, theoretically. Uh, as that bell curve moves moves into the 60s and 70s, mm -hmm. and uh, people can't work, and they got to rely on Social Security if it still exists at that time, mm -hmm. and so forth. So, what you know, on a macro level, what can our community do, you know, in its present vision of this problem? Well, I, I think, and and I, I warned you in the uh, in the off time, that. I still believe in one at a time. We, we work with folks and every, every one person that, that is happy or that something's good done, is, is done for, that that's, that's a success. But your, your comment, of how the bell curve is gonna change, what are we gonna do when a, a quarter of your population is over 65? And then, you know, you, the 85 year olds have, have exploded the, in, in numbers and Lord knows the, the problems they're gonna have. I think the, we laugh at it, but the public-private partnerships are absolutely critical. And it's, can they, can, and I know, I think the, some presidents have tried, but it, it's mostly been lip service. What can the government dollar, which is, is good, what can they do with the private dollar that's out there? How can we muster up the, the, the things that will support folks if they're willing, and you know, this is, this is my mantra, even with folks that are, have, have been blessed, is you've got as much responsibility in, in your work, in your health, and your responsibilities for financial support as, as, as we do, and sometimes even more. But what can we do together? Because the only answer to the future is emulating, caring for each other in a way that still allows the entrepreneurship, the, look, when somebody has a good year, makes, we were lawyers. If you had a good year, you felt darn happy. You had a crummy year and you still could pay the staff, you were still happy. <laughs> and you've got to continue to maintain that kind of thinking, but also that behind it all is what a blessing and how do you work part of that blessing into the work with others. It's funny, it almost becomes a contagious type of, of work ethic because when people see good things being done, and, and we've seen it at Arcadia and in all our companies, that other people try to do good things too and emulating. Now it doesn't always work out and stuff happens, 
But the bottom line on all of it is, when you say the bell curve shifting, money's not going to be there. Government has suggested, and I know we've supported the idea, the Class Act, which was cut out of Obamacare, but the Class Act was basically a, another form of what I call Social Security, where you put money away, hopefully you never needed it, but the government had at least 35 40 or $50 a day after 10 or 15 years that could go toward care that was needed. Because all of us in one time or another are going to experience maybe a need for that kind of care. Yeah. The other thing is, it, it, you know the statistics, Jay, you know, a billion dollars worth of unpaid care is given by wives, daughters, sisters, even men, to the family members or to friends uh, or to cousins. And the idea was the government would be better off helping to pay for some of that at a lower rate than institutionalizing folks. And the first cry was the quality of care might be stinky. But the idea there is, can we reach out and help teach somebody, work with somebody, spread ourselves thin enough so that the help for a person that's certainly not a CNA or a nurse or have that background would still be able to provide at least some quality care and, and work for a, a person that was in deep Yeah, we have to do that. I, That's, <clears throat> you ask, well, how do you do it? Those are the kind of things we look at. I'm reminded when I first began dating my wife, which was 50 years plus ago, um, of a, a little community down behind Koloa Town in Kauai. Uh, okay? Okay. And it was where the Kupuna lived. Mm -hmm. And all the men in, the, in Kaloa Town would, would build this thing and maintain it. Right. And it was a bunch of, you know, plantation houses yeah. with a green, you know, walls and the steel roofs yeah. and uh, there were little paths. It was, it was very, you know, it was very lush but primitive. And, yeah. And that's where they lived. And people came to see them right. and brought them food. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a kind of a community effort at mm -hmm. taking care of them. Yeah. And uh, what I, what I, I raise it because it, it means that everybody in Kaloa Town was involved in that. Had a piece there were no it. exceptions, yeah. you know. Right. Now, we, now we're not involved in that and mm -hmm. we don't care much about it and mm -hmm. we have to go back to caring because it's us in the end, right. at the end of the day, it's our community. It's, it's shameful that Hawaii has the homeless, mm -hmm. but it's far more shameful if Hawaii has elder homeless. Mm -hmm. Uh, who can't, who, you know, who die a thousand deaths mm -hmm. uh, without care, without, without shelter, without food. Um, and that could come oh, unless it's, we it's attend sure. to this. Yeah. It's, it, and it's, to me, again, it's the, the one by one method. You, you reach out and hopefully that news spreads a little. There's, there's going to be disappointment. I think there's going to be, there's going to be crying. There's going to be uh, heartbreak. I, no question in my mind. But if, if we can make the heartbreak a little less, a little less uh, possible to come, uh, that, that bell curve that you're talking about, which is going to bulge, I mean, it's going to get out of the bell and bulge, uh, that we may be able to co conquer some, something. And, and in doing so, encourage everyone that, that is a little blessed than not to uh, reach out. So. Uh I guess the question I would I would ask you is, mm -hmm. um, uh, can we be ever can we ever handle this appropriately, even to the point of exporting the expertise and the systems that you're you're talking about and designing and implementing? That's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, can we can we can we make this um, you know ubiquitous in the state in all the islands? Uh, and furthermore, mm -hmm. can we export it to the to the point where we have people coming, the islands become a magnet. You know, I always thought that would happen, but it hasn't really happened. No, they just flew over us. Yeah, they <laughs> flew over us, right. You know, I thought this would be the most wonderful place for retirement communities. Mm -hmm. A lot of developers lost their pants on trying to do that, yeah. but they weren't able to make it work. Can we ever do that? I think, you know, it, it, people listening to me, now the ones that know me know that I'm, I'm less full of it than somebody that doesn't know me saying the guy's nice, but he's full of well, the cocker, but, but I mean, it's legitimately nice. The real deal here, yeah, right but, here. But, but uh, <laughs> the question you pose is something that, that at least our, the staff and the folks I work with have, begun, have explored. One of the wonderful things that we've had the opportunity to do through actually a former uh, uh, Office of Health Care uh, chief, uh, Diane Okamura, she was able to suggest and 
we have put together a work with Mapu'uwai, the Native Hawaiian Health Corporation that, that we've dealt with on Lanai and Molokai, rural. And it's been, a, for 10 years, it's been a wonderful experience. And we have been able to share, and of course, most folks think that I'm typically nuts. It, well, how's your insurance? And I say, it's in place with prayer, yes because we rely on, on the folks that are taking care of the kapuna over in the rural areas. Uh, the one thing I can assure everyone is that age is indiscriminatory. Aging, it doesn't matter where you are. You're going to get old, and you're going to have you problems. never escape. No, no. You, you can't. But a uh, long-winded way of, of introducing you to the concept that we really feel strongly about that might hold a super key for future better things for everyone, and that's the technology. Ah. If we can get into the houses, get into the apartments, uh, and you know, at a, at a reasonable expense, and it, it will be, pri it will be very primeval in the beginning, as anything is. But the ability to monitor one's health, to remind one, to let one call when things are down, to remind one to do certain things, through the technology, you then have basic—I won't say robots—but you've got. You've got fingers out there that people only dreamt about five, ten years ago. Now, we're not there, and I have no idea how long it's going to take us, but we know between the Pu'uvai and I had a call from a, a, a dear minister up in the, in the Waianae area uh, a, a, on the leeward coast to say, what can we do with the rural Kampuna? We're worried about them out here. And so we, we, we talk to each other. Now, it takes time, and I'm never sure it's going to work, but through the good luck of Arcadia and its companies and the, the strength it's built, you know, we're strong. And yeah, we, we could get hosed. But, <laughs> well, everybody can get hosed. So the real question is, <laughs> how do we make sure the hose doesn't hose us? And how do we reach out? And I think technology is one key that's going to be able to bring to fruition what you and I are talking about. Because yeah. We, I, I see it happening. It, it yeah. can happen. Yeah. And I, I, you know, by the year uh, 20, 20, 25, 2030, it may be okay. It, yeah. may be, it may be we're reaching more people, and they still may have homeless, but you know, in their tents, they may have something that tells them, here's what you better be doing to keep your health up. Yeah. Or to keep your good, your good side better than your bad. Yeah. We've got to do that. Yeah. If it was, I mean, one thing to live in, uh, you know, in Arcadia or, or right. in, uh, in Kahala Nui, but it's, it's mm -hmm. another thing, you know, uh, in the tent. And we can deliver at a relatively cheap price technology that will do some of this for help, them. Help out. And, of course, if they assume a uh, person assumes responsibility. But the kindness and, and the return, you know, it works. It, it doesn't mean that there's not going to be some nasty stuff that goes on, but... You know, in the end, it actually, uh, I do believe it overrules. Now, people look at me and say I'm soft, but, you know, killing innocents and doing things like that, I, I have a military background, I'm, I have, they ought to be gone. <laughs> but right. working in kindness with the kind of work we're doing. Because, hey, I want Arcadia to stay full, and it will stay full. I think Craigside will stay full. But that synergy, that blessing that they have continues to be able to be a spark that ignites the good things for those that have decided not to come, can't come because they can't afford it, or have hit a rough time in life when they're old. It reminds me of uh, something uh, a fellow once said to our firm, our law firm years mm. ago. He said, the most important thing is to take care of each other. You bet. And uh, that's what you represent to me. And we're going to take care of each other. But, but, you know, somebody kicks me in my knees. Well, you know, Take care of me in a different way. I'll kick him back. <laughs> kick him back. But, but too often, a little kindness, even in a rough situation, when, when somebody's facing that guy. I mean, we're not talking about, uh, you know, uh, empirical discussions of uh, uh, philosophy and everything. We're just talking about the needs of a human being and the relationships that become better when we're all sort of feeling pretty good together. Yeah. Okay, Emmett White, taking care of the people in Arcadia mm -hmm. in all its various forms, iterations, and models, mm -hmm. including some very creative models, and also <clears throat> talking about we all take care of each other, and that really touches me. 
here on Aging with Grace, Arcadia to the Rescue. Thank you so much, Emmett. You're welcome, Jay. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs>